Lloyd, nice to meet you. And that's you. all of, uh, I'm Ian Cox, that's all why yeah, I was here many moons ago. That's all, as Neil said, that's all before you was born. Um, that's all, how's things for you? That's all, and how's things going? The team's obviously doing really well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as you said, it's been a good, it's good, it's been a good start to the season. Um, I think since the gaffer's come in um, with his coaching staff, I think everyone's kind of adapted to his, his playing style. Um, and that's from the start of pre-season up until now. And I'm pretty sure from now until the end of the season, we'll, we'll probably do the same. Um, there's things that we still need to work on, but I think overall, like from where we were at the, the start of pre-season to now, is, it's been amazing. And I think for people watching, the fans and the people that support this club, I think is, is you can tell there's a difference. Um, everyone, um, feels like they're together um, and that we got that winning mentality. Um, I think that's the main thing going like this season. Um, I think everyone's on the same page. And as you said, the past couple of games has been, we've come up against some good opposition. Um, and I feel like we're starting to kind of um, come together and as a team and put out these performances, which we know we can do. That's good. So, that's all this, obviously Black History Month, you know, that's all. Of, um, what do you feel like at the present moment in time that players can do to, to have a bit more of an impact and get that awareness out there? Yeah, I think obviously social media and how it is, is, is massive, you know what I mean? Um, I think there's so much you can do in terms of your own social media. It kind of um, is somewhere that you can put your views and your opinions out to the world and I feel like over the past 18 months, obviously with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, it's been something that's been talked about a lot more. Um, but at the same time, I feel, still feel like there's a, there's a long way to go. I don't know how you feel about it. Yeah, I had this conversation with, with Neil. I think also from where I was playing, also as a young man, also growing up to, to now, also there has been improvements, mm. you know, but I feel that you know, especially with social media, you know, that sort of thing, there, there can be a lot more done. You know, I feel that, you know, a lot more needs to be done from the, the actual hierarchy and the social media platforms, mm -hmm. you know, possibly have like a, a KYC and know your customer where they have to put, uh, like sort of their, their the driving ID, license, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, that way that would eradicate, you know, like sort of anonymity, mm -hmm. you know, from people who feel that like sort of they, they got a divine right to, to abuse players. And I don't feel that, that's right for me, like sort of any form of uh, injustice, you know, like sort of any form of inequality is not right. Mm -hmm. And especially like sort of, you know, in the day and the time we're in now where worlds colliding, we're in a multicultural society, you know, I still feel that like sort of we've come a long way, yeah. but there is still a long way and a lot more to be done. And this, you know, lots of we've ever, like sort of boys taking the knees and, and, the, and so forth before games. And I think this is good, but like sort of there still needs to be a lot more action. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Sure. I think I got to agree with you. Is there's a there's stuff being done on um, racism and inequality and injustice, um, but I feel like, as both of us agree on, there's a lot more to lot more to do. Um, and obviously, with the with the movement and taking the knee before the games, um, when it came in, we were all of us come together as a squad and agreed to to take the knee and. Um, stand for what that movement uh, means. Um, but I think as time progressed, we felt like taking a knee wasn't really getting yeah. that out there, you know what I mean? Yeah. And we felt like it was just continuing. Um, so I think that's when we sat down as a team and came together and said, look, we'll, we'll stop taking the knee. Um, do so you feel it's not having the same impact as what it was having initially? Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, I think everyone's, we had a long discussion on that and it was um, a lot of opinions and I think that was a good thing in the changing room. There was a lot of talk about it and different, different opinions being thrown out and it's just an open space where you can talk about these things. Um, and I think that's the, that's the main thing, um, being able to, to talk about these topics with no um, sort of... Um, kind of just an open free space to just voice your opinion 
don't get me wrong, there's going to be times where people disagree and agree, but I think that's, that's life, isn't it? It is very much so. Yeah. Um, but it's important that you have it in a safe space as well. Yeah, you feel exactly. like all you're in a safe space with your teammates and they're supporting you know, they're supporting the cause, of course. you know, like, so, and they're supporting you as individuals as well. I think that's good. Because it's one thing I noticed on the pitch, that the unity that you seem to have as a team, I think is, is fantastic, mm-hmm. you know, like, mm-hmm. so, especially like, so, you know, when you look at work rates, like, so, you're, you're playing and like, so, one goes, you all go, someone scores a goal, you all come together as a team, yeah, as a unit. Yeah, yeah. And even as the subs, they, they want to like, so, kind of congratulate and you, you know, you scored a goal on a Saturday, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. congratulations on that. Yeah, perfect. You know, but yeah, they all, everyone wants to come together, which I think is fantastic. And I think as, as a team, it's, it's, it's nice to have really knowing you've got that support back in you. Yeah, 100%. Um, I think everyone, as you said, this season is, is back in each other and it's not even the boys playing. It's most of the boys that are not being able to get many minutes this season, it, it's like it doesn't matter. Um, of course, everyone wants to be out on that pitch and play, but at the same time, everyone's backing each other no matter what. Um, and it's a nice feeling to have, um, and it's a good environment to work in. Yeah, yeah. How did it feel, Lassell, when you was given the captain's armband? You know, Lassell kind of talked through the process of you being offered or given the, the captain's armband. Yeah, it was, um, to be honest, it wasn't really something that was discussed between um, me, the gaffer, and the, and the coaching staff. Obviously, last season, I felt like um, I was some sort of a leader, um, voicing on the pitch and um, kind of playing that role. But I feel like this season is obviously stepped up a little bit more. Um, since the start of pre-season, it was obviously I captained the team in pre-season and then I wasn't really too sure what was going to happen in into the season um, but the gaff has shown that faith in me and that trust in me um, to to give me that and I feel like it's you could say it's a bit of added pressure but I feel like I play in those pressure situations um, and I'm just uh, relishing every every game to be able to be captain um, is a is an amazing thing um, for my career at the moment and I feel like it's it's brought my game to a, to another level. Yeah. See, like, so when I was made captain, you know, 25, 26 years ago, I didn't actually want the captain, see, Lloyd. You know, right. like, you know what, I just, because I was quite quiet by nature, yeah. you know, like, so, so the majority of the captains I kind of played under, they were always like, so very loud and very boisterous, you know, they were kind of like, so be digging you out in the changing rooms and things like that. But he, and I felt like I didn't have those qualities to, to be that type of captain, really. But obviously, my mate saw something in me, a bit like, you know, you, your manager has seen in you, Scott Parker has seen in you. So you don't have to be, you know, like sort of, you know, loud and, and so forth. You lead by example. Of course. And I think they say that 58% of body, like sort of communication is body language. Oh, yeah, so yeah. you lead by, like sort of example, what you're actually doing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, and I think sometimes, like sort of being a quieter, like sort of a bit more kind of, not as vocal. Sometimes that has like, sort of just as much in, impact as like, sort of someone is, who's like, sort of loud and, and you know, kind of digging people out. So, yeah. yeah, it wasn't my nature to be someone who wanted to dig, dig people out, really. So. What, what was it like being a uh, captain in Bournemouth? You know what? A bit similar to like what you just said, I thrived on that, that uh, responsibility that was bestowed upon me. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. when like, sort of, I kind of was given the captaincy, I felt my performance, my performance levels went up a notch, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, just purely because like, sort of, I felt like oh, I had to lead by example. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, there were games I didn't play too well in, you know, which is, as you say, that's life. But I felt like the, the actual added pressure, as you said, and the responsibility, you know, to lead by example and be the go-between between the players and the manager, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I felt that that, you know, people may well argue, but I felt that it had a little bit more, like, sort of, uh, push me on. Yeah, 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 you know? I understand. Yeah. yeah. Growing up um, in Croydon, wasn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. What was it like, obviously, on and off the pitch, the difference between the two? So as a young man growing up, you know, racism was, was rife, Lloyd, you know, like, sort of, in Croydon. I used to live, I lived in, like, sort of, just outside Croydon, like, sort of, in a place called Coulston, which is quite rural. So, you know, the, we didn't have much of a black community on like the estate. Yeah. Um, it was predominantly white and it was, the racism was quite rife. Um, I guess I was a little bit not fortunate, but I had two older brothers that, that tended to look after me and no yeah. one kind of really 
you know, messed about with my brothers and such really, but you know, it was rife, you know, and you'd, you'd walk along the street and you'd always like, sort of feel that there, there was an undercurrent there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, playing football, you know, like, sort of was pretty similar, like, sort of in my early days, you know, like, sort of there was always a, a little bit of an undercurrent when I was playing non-league football. Right. Players-wise, never had any problems with players, you know, it was always like, you know, the odd comment from maybe supporters and so forth, but when I signed for Crystal Palace, you know, like, sort of our black community, like, sort of, I think it was probably a one in three of the, the actual squad mm -hmm. was, was black. So, you know, like, sort of, there was, it was well represented, like, sort of, at Crystal Palace. Um, and then coming to Bournemouth, you know, like, sort of, where I think there was only, there was myself, I think there was probably Jason Brissett, you know, Mark Watson. So there was only about three or four of us here, you know, at the time. Um, but I never had any, any like, sort of, racial intimidation down here you right. know I was, I was very fortunate really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so i think in my professional career i didn't have too much but like sort of in my early years growing up you know i did have quite a lot of um of racial abuse right mm. and, and what, what's for yourself what was it like i know bristol is a bit more of a multicultural city yeah um growing up for me in bristol um i think the area that i grew up and the schools um that i attended were quite multicultural. Um, there was a diverse ethnic background. Um, so I felt like in my early years, there wasn't too much, but now and again, you'll get the, the odd occasion. Um, but I felt like it was, it was a good environment to grow up because you had, um, as I said, a diverse background of, of people and everyone got along so well and, um, and then obviously on the pitch, there wasn't too much. Um, the only occasion that I can really think of is when we flew to Italy um, with the under 20s for England. Um, and one of the players got abused there by the away supporters. Yeah. Um, but that's the, that's the only occasion that I can really think of as where uh, any injustice or any racism occurred. Mm. Um, and then in terms of the squads that I've been in. Obviously, I was at Bristol City before yeah. I came to Bournemouth. Um, and it was the same. There was so much background. Nowadays, you'll see so much background, different yeah. backgrounds yeah, in football. Yeah, for sure. Um, and there was, it was lovely, to be honest. There was um, such a good environment to be in. And then, obviously, I signed for Bournemouth and it was, it was the same here. Um, so, I think my experience in racism in football um, so far in my career, it's been, it's been okay um, for myself personally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's something that I can say. But obviously, you see many stories um, nowadays of people getting racially abused online, in person. Um, so I think it goes back to what we said at the beginning. It's something that's um, being worked on, but I feel like there's still so much more that as you said, the people higher up can do to, to offer that support. Yeah. Lloyd, yeah, thank you very much for your time. No, Great to chat to you. Lots no. of all the best for the rest of the season. Lots of all, hope you go up and you guys continue doing the good work you're doing. No, I appreciate it. Thank you.